Hello everyone! So, the year 2014 is behind us, and just like last year, just like I did for 2013, I'm going to talk about my favorite and least favorite films of the year. Now, unlike last year, where I think I saw about 35 films, and that's really not enough to build up a good list, this year I actually made the effort, and to date, I have seen 79 films that were released in 2014. Each of these movies, I gave it a rating from... 10 for films that are among my absolute favorite to 0 for this film is complete trash and nobody should watch it. Didn't award either a 0 or a 10 to anything. The lowest score I awarded was a 1.5 and the highest I gave a few 9.5s. Uh, a 5 on my rating scale means I'm completely ambivalent to the film. The negatives and the positives kind of cancel each other out and I'm just kind of going Eh. Go see it, think of, what, think of it what you will. Personally, it didn't really impact me, kind of thing. So, of the 79 films, I did a bit of math, and my median score, which is, you know, right in the center, is 6.5, and my mean score is 6.3. So, I did actually end up liking more films than I disliked this year. And as it happens, there are 12 films each, at 9 out of 10 or better, or 3.5 out of 10 or worse. So those films are going to comprise my favorites and worst list of the year. And there will be a few honorable mentions, but in this video, I wanted to get the groundwork out of the way, and as well as talk about a few films that you're not going to see on either list. And let's start with films that I did not and will not see. So. In the, these are religious films that are just, that I know are going to piss me off, so I didn't see them. We have The Son of God. God's Not Dead. Heaven is For Real. The Identical. Left Behind. And Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. Do I have to explain again why I wouldn't go see these? I actually did consider going to see left behind at one point, and then decided to go see a better film instead, and I'm really happy I did that. Why am I going to go see these when I know they're just going to piss me off? Every movie I went to go see, I did not expect to be pissed off when I went to go see them. And for the most part, yeah, I wasn't. Some of them didn't really impact me, but I'm not going to go see a film just because I know it's going to piss me off. So now that the religious ones are out of the way, let's get up some other ones that I didn't go see because they were absolutely getting horrible reviews and I was either busy or, you know, just didn't want to go see them. And those are Winter's Tale, I, Frankenstein, The Legend of Hercules, The Other Woman, Tammy, Blended, The Purge Anarchy, Dracula Untold, and Ouija. Yeah, didn't see them. Don't plan on seeing them. They sound pretty horrible. Not going to subject myself to them. Now, just because they are in limited release and didn't get to my area in time, there are a few movies that I actually do kind of want to see but have not yet had a chance to see, Come award season, like when the Oscars comes out, I'll probably force myself to go see them, find some time to see them, and that way I can at least say, hey, I saw all these movies, here's what I think is going to win the Oscars, and be able to give my opinion honestly, because I've seen everything. So the films I have not seen yet that I actually do want to see are Selma, American Sniper, Big Eyes, Maps to the Stars. All of them are getting Oscar buzz and or are nominated for Golden Globes. I haven't seen them. What can I say? Just haven't either had the opportunity. I know Selma and American Sniper and Big Eyes are playing right now. I have not found the time because I'm in a play this coming weekend. So anyway, I'll try to get to see them before Oscar season. I'll let you know what I think. There are some films that I'm going to talk about that I saw aren't going to be on any of my other list, even as honorable mentions, just because they're in the middle of the pack, but they're worth mentioning because people might expect to see them. So I'm going to start with The Amazing Spider-Man 2. 
which in my mind is the very definition of a five. I did like the interplay between Andrew Garfield as Peter and Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. I don't know why Sony decided to cram so many villains into a film. You would think they have learned something from Spider-Man 3, but they apparently didn't. And everything here felt rushed or cliched or coincidental. And while it can be fun at times, a lot of it really just annoyed. Just give Spider-Man back to Marvel. You can't handle the character. Just give him back to Marvel. Get him in the Avengers. Work it out, will you? 300, Rise of an Empire. And Sin City, a dame to kill for. Uh, honestly, Sin City is a little bit better movie, but really the only reason you want to go see these is because of Eva Green, who is absolutely wonderful in anything she's in, even if it's crap, because she is just having so much fun. couple of uh, big year for religious movies, but a couple of the more mainstream ones are Noah and Exodus, Gods and Kings. Both of these I gave a 5 to. Now, in my opinion, Noah is slightly more watchable because it's just insane as hell. It, it's just, wow. I talked about this in another, another video of mine, but if you can kind of turn off your brain and forget, wait, how is this based on the Bible? What, what, what the hell is going on here? Uh, you can kind of enjoy for how insane it is, except for those two freaking CGI babies who are so far into the Uncanny Valley, they kind of made me feel physically ill watching the screen and watching them squirm around and... Uh, God, those babies. Why they didn't use real babies, I don't know, but oh man, those things were just hideous to look at. Exodus, on the other hand, is an absolutely gorgeously shot film with a completely blah storyline. And, okay, I don't care if it's appropriate or not, why in the hell did they cast God as a petulant nine-year-old? Okay, speaking of Uncanny Valley, Foxcatcher. Yeah, I can understand why this film is getting buzz in the acting categories, but honestly, I've heard people describe this film as deliberately paced, and whenever you hear a critic describe a film as deliberately paced, they mean slow as fuck. Oh my god, just dragged. And yes, the characters are kind of interesting. And I can't really fault the performers, but... Oh, I know John DuPont is not the most attractive guy, and he's kind of weird looking, but that makeup that they had on Steve Carell... Oh, Uncanny Valley very much in the Uncanny Valley. I could not watch too much of the film while he was on screen. Here's one that I know a lot of people liked and yeah, was was good, but really? Why are you going so gaga over Interstellar? Yes, it's another one of these gorgeous films and the story's okay. They spend a lot of time talking about what you can actually see on screen a couple of the plot points come right out of nowhere, and I don't think it's as original as some people think, because I was able to predict pretty much what was going to happen as soon as they started laying out what was going on from, uh, I can't really sp say anything without spoiling it, but for one of the points, you'll see a character get introduced, you'll see who's playing him, and you're going to say, yep. I know exactly what you're going to do, and guess what? You're going to be right. That and the fact that it, well, some of the, some of the physics in this film is very good. At other points, they kind of toss it out. Like, okay, so they need a Saturn V type rocket to launch the landing vehicle from Earth into orbit, where it will then attach to the main vehicle. But then. Well, the main vehicle is in orbit around a black, pole, black hole, which is around a planet. This landing vehicle is able to get down to the planet and then back up to the orbiting vehicle without any kind of launch system. What kind of sense does that make? I can hear people say, yeah, but just need to advance the story. But later on, they're going to bring up the fact that you need to leave weight behind in order to escape. So why wasn't it required in this case? when they're escaping from the planet, that doesn't make sense. 
That said, this is still a good film, let me stress that. I just personally consider it a lesser entry in Christopher Nolan's filmography, which, considering that this is considered a lesser entry, that says a lot about the quality of his films. I still like him. He can do better than this. So now let's talk about a few films that are getting legitimate Oscar buzz for their performances, and that is Nightcrawler, Wild, Inherent Vice, The Theory of Everything. These are all films where I had a good time watching them, and the actors give absolutely phenomenal performances. They deserve their nominations. It just so happens that the films themselves kind of left me, eh, yeah, stories okay. Performances are great, stories okay. And that's pretty much all I have to say about those ones. And now let's talk about a couple of films that, well, they didn't make my best list. I still think you should go see them. And I'm not even going to talk about them. They didn't even quite make my cutoff for honor roll mentions. But these are both really good films. I do recommend you go see them. And those are Godzilla. No, I think I've already talked about this one in another video too, but the fight scene, especially at the end with Godzilla, is fantastic. I just wish they had made the human characters a little more interesting, not cock-teased us so much. Okay, people are probably going to object to me using that, but ah, the teases in this film just... Mm, and make that fight scene more worth the wait if you're not going to... if you insist on teasing us so much there. Because it, so much of it's shot in the dark that it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. It does look good, what's there, but it's the old CGI trick of, okay, we don't want to spend all the time rendering to make this look super good in the light, so let's make it a little dark and hide the fact that there are some flaws. And Snowpiercer. The, if you like really good sci-fi, go see this one. It's kind of an odd mix between The Cube and Hunger Games. Sounds really weird. It works a lot better, and I really appreciate that this is not the typical Hollywood film. That's it for now. I'm going to start work on my worst list fairly soon, and the best list will follow shortly after that. I'll talk to you folks later.